Hey guys, it's Melanie here from Christian Y Books and More, and I'm here to give you my November wrap up and December TBR. There is a, a small child playing basketball outside, and my children are home, of course, and so you may hear kids in the background as well as I can't edit, so you have to just deal with me as being real and me. Anyways, I want to give you guys a little bit of a wrap up for November. I don't know if I did October and I don't know if I will just because I want to get moving on into the new year. I'm so excited. So for the month of November, I have been reading a nonfiction book and it's only because I have to actually take it in the course. So the nonfiction being Online Searching um, by Susan Bell and this is the book I've been working on for my university um, course and it's been really good. I like it a lot and actually it has helped me a lot in our personal life, in the ministry and all that stuff. Helping to re do research for my husband um, and myself um, for personal reasons as well as working with people in the library. It's always handy. So yes, I am enjoying my course and doing okay, which is really good considering my struggles with dyslexia, as um, some of you know. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pretty proud. Um, I don't have anywhere to put these books, so I'm just going to have to put them on the ground. Just one second. Going on. So that's my nonfiction. I don't read a lot of nonfiction, as you guys also know. So that one was like, it's a bit heavy. Um, I didn't, I have another nonfiction book that I've been wanting to read more of, but I haven't because I'm into this one. And like I said earlier, nonfiction in me, I have to really concentrate on what I'm reading. I need to absorb it. If it's not a story where it's hooking me in to read more, I have a hard time retaining that knowledge. It takes me a lot more to process and I have to do a lot more things like taking notes or different things. If you guys want a video on my tips with dyslexia and learning or study tips for people with dyslexia, please let me know and give this a thumbs up and I will definitely do that for you. So going into my fiction, my first being um, Without Warning by Lynette Eason. She's awesome. You guys know I've talked about her before. She's really cool. These guys are awesome and um, they're part of the Elite Guardians. This book is de dealing with Katie and she also um, has some struggles, some past issues with some, I think it's called PSD, um, post syndrome, I don't know. Anyways, where you deal with issues of like, I don't even know how to explain it. This is part of my dyslexia. So when you're dealing with like, uh, you've gone into major stressful environments and you cannot get over some of the aspects of it. There's been death. I mean, it's a very severe problem and a lot of soldiers, some other people deal with it, especially those who put their lives in danger and cannot help or try to help other people and they end up getting hurt. These can lead to psychological damaging things and these two characters struggle with that and it was really nicely done and it gave like homage to the soldiers in the US and all that they do and of course I think of the Canadian soldiers and any country can and it's just really good insight. There are some gory aspects to this book um, that is kind of uh, crazy uh, to think about and uh, but the murder mystery idea of it behind the scenes was kind of intriguing. It was neat to see how Lynette Easton uh, put this together, put this book together um, and yeah it was it was overall really good. I will give my star rating because I did not check my Goodreads to see what I gave all these. I think they're all over four but I don't know. I have to check. I know one of them is a five for sure but I don't think I gave a rating to one of them. So I will link that in the description box below when I'm done um, and uploading this video so that you guys know what I gave for each of these books. But this one was a good one. I did rate it higher than normal. So yes, check this out. They're a really cool series. I think the other ones are coming soon and I cannot wait. These guys are awesome. These girls are really cool. There's also a guy um, in this, which is the brother of the main character that we first got introduced in the Elite Guardian series. Um, Olivia's brother, I believe it is. His name's Charles. So, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, like, his role in the next series, the parts of the series, and how many books Lynette's going to put out with this series. I'm really looking forward to that. So, yes, these covers are really cool, too, by the way. 
then scudding on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> then I got, because I was part of the Rebel team for um, one of the books that was given to me uh, as a blog tour type um, book to review, I read the first book in the series which was Thunder by Bonnie um, Calhoun. Calhoun? Calhoun? I don't know how to pronounce her name. Uh, this was good. The writing is very good. Just the issues regarding relationships for the genre this is in, like YA, isn't what I would recommend to people. So that it's kind of a bittersweet thing for me. I really, really like the writing and the writing style. The world building was amazing. I also liked the characters in here. They were very memorable, written well. The only thing I didn't like was a lot of the action got very violent and, um, which I think the author really um, loves about how she writes. And then also um, the relationship and how you view the opposite sex and just different thoughts about that was um, not something I really want to recommend. So going into the third book, because I skipped number two, I didn't want to buy any more books and I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy this series or not. Going into the book number three, I felt the same way and actually stopped reading it. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to read that within the time frame they wanted me to. Of course, I didn't get it read for November, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. I will be reading this book and giving a full review of it later, but as of right now, it's not gonna be the highest review I, I'm going to give it. But like I said, the writing was amazing and so was the characters. Like, So I might, in spite of that, give it maybe a three or four. I'm not sure, I don't think it's gonna hit a four, but uh, such is the life. I don't think I can recommend this book as a Christian novel, but is a dystopian and if you're not Christian, you probably will find this just fine. Um, but as a recommendation from Christian Y Books and More, I'm not 100% sure if I can do that. Ah, that's the issues I have to face, but then at least you know before you read it if things like that are a trigger for you or you don't want to be reading that kind of stuff and it's hard for you and um, a temptation of some sort, then you can at least avoid the books that could possibly detrim detri be detrimental to your Christian faith. So that is something that you have to keep in mind and why I do these reviews. So yes, that's that. Um, then I got, which I can definitely recommend, da -da -da, Melanie Dickerson, Silent Songbird. This is a Melanie uh, Dickerson book number seven of Think of the Hangenheim series, which I had heard a rumor that maybe there might be more. So you have to stay tuned to that. My lips are sealed about it. But there might be a secret somewhere, somehow, that is out there via YouTube somewhere. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, back to Melanie Dickerson. This is a Little Mermaid retelling. And of course, with all Melanie Dickerson books, there's not really any magic or anything like that. And the Melanie uh, Dickerson style of fairy tale retellings is so true to life that you almost forget that it's a retelling and you're so wrapped up in the story that you're like, wait a minute, this is actually a retelling of Little Mermaid. And then you see all the little things that are pulled out of the stories to bring to life a whole new story. It's so incredibly unique how she does this, and you learn more in a video that we did with Angela. I'll post the link of that video down below. Just to warn you, it is spoilers. If you haven't read this book, do not watch it. Read, uh, read this book first before you watch that video. They are spoilers in those videos. So please, please, please do yourself a favor. Do not watch them until you've read this book. We only do those videos, the live show videos, after our book club pick that we've read together for that month and then do the video. So please, if you haven't read this book, do not watch the videos. But anyways, this is awesome. Her name is Evangeline. She's a ward of the king and is set to marry an older, very vile Lord Chivalry, I think his name is. 
and he is very happy to be marrying her, the ward of the king, for his own selfish motivations, which you learn later on. Now, she runs away in the beginning of the book, so I'm not giving you any spoilers, and it's all of her escapades and how she is trying to escape that marriage that she so badly does not want to be married to this man, but she doesn't want to disappoint her cousin, who is the king um, in her area. So, yes, very good, very awesome. Still has the Little Mermaid elements, which is excellent, and yet you still get all of what you want in a Melanie Dickerson book. Perfect, five out of star, five stars, and yes, that is that. That is it for the month of November. It was a lot of books. It was three plus a nonfiction, which is a little less than I normally like to read, but given that I've been so busy and life has been really busy, I think it's pretty good. Now, going on to December, it's going to be a very busy month, but I have a few things that I really wanted to read, and so I think I'll get to them. I've actually finished one already as of today, which is the fourth or fifth, I believe. So yeah, um, the first being, which I've already read, is Lady Maybe by Melanie, uh, or sorry, Julie Clausen. See, can't edit. Julie Clausen, and she's a best-selling author. This is about... Um, Hannah, Hannah Rogers, and her, she's a companion, a mistress companion, and she is in her own turmoil, and she has things going on in her life, and she's asked to go on one last excursion with her, um, lady, um, lady, what's her name? Oh, Mariana is her first name. Lady Hayfield? Something. Mayfield. Mayfield, I think is Mayfield. Anyways, she's supposed to go with her on this last excursion with her husband John, Sir John, and they're moving and she was promised a sum of money for the situation that she was stuck in that she needed to get out of. So she decided to go, but it could have been like the worst decision she made and there was an accident she's thrust into a role that she's not accustomed to, things are going crazy around her, there's lots of stuff happening and she's stuck in the situation and yeah, very intriguing story. I read it um, in a day and a half. There is, this is an adult book guys, is not for YA. I can't even recommend it for under 18. There's some issues about this book that I have because of that fact, um, but Julia Clausen is an amazing writer. She has incredible characters and incredible stories that just captivate you and really, I couldn't let this book down. However, there is those issues about relationships and just awakening love and before it pleases, so I have to up this age restriction to over 18, and if you're very sensitive to those kinds of things, I would suggest not reading it, just based on that alone. Um, it is pretty intense, some of the scenes in there. It obviously is clean in a sense of clean cleanliness, um, but, you know, it does evoke a lot of emotions, and I would have to say, if you're very sensitive to, sensitive to that and you cannot uh, read it uh, with a clean conscience or whatever, I would suggest not reading it at all because that's how intense it was. And, and in all honesty, if I had heard this kind of review before going in, I might not have read this book and wouldn't have felt bad about it. So I just want you to know that ahead of time so that you can make your own decision in a clear conscience of how you want to go ahead and read this. This is 18 and up. Please do not read it if you are under 18. And so yeah, that's Lady Maybe. Again, Julie Clausen is an amazing author. She's written one of my favorite books of all. And so I can't dismiss her writing or whatever, but it's very, very intense, those scenes. So keep that in mind. The next book uh, for December is a TBR, which I have not read and probably will be starting very, very soon since I'm done with Lady Maybe as of last night, is da 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 
Can't Help Falling by Kara Isaac. We have an incredible giveaway that is on my blog right now um, that you can check out at realitywriter.wordpress.com where you can get a signed copy of this plus some goodies that we, Angela and I, put together, Angela Coffees and Chapters, and I will link her channel below where she explains all of the goodies for you guys. It's also on my website, my blog, and so you can check that out. But I cannot wait to start reading this book. It's so nice. The cover is so beautiful, and I can't wait to start discussing this in our live show at the end of the month. Actually, it's in the beginning of January, because the end of January is going or end of December is going to be crazy with everything that we're all doing and so yes definitely definitely looking forward to this book and cannot wait to tell you all about it basically a little synopsis of this book is this main character she is working at a Narnia C.S. Lewis style place in Oxford England he is um, looking for answers and trying to win over his uncle, I believe it is, and so he goes to this place and they meet and it's all Narnia themed and we can't help but falling probably in love. So yes, can't wait to read this, super excited. And yeah, that's my second last book of December. The next book is a tiny one and I think I'll be able to get to no problem. And that is Keeping Christmas, a novel by Dan Walsh. Now, I did start reading this last year because it was a Revel, Revel uh, book for last year. Um, it wasn't something I was totally interested in because it deals with older people, which is fine, but their kids are out of the house and they want them back in the house. And me, in my situation, I got a little one still at home and so it's not really the same situation for me to deal with and actually relate to. So I'm going to give it another try this year and see what I feel and see how I think about it. It's a Christmas book and the Christmas book that I wanted by Karen Kingsbury I haven't been able to get yet so I'm going to read this one instead. That's it for me guys and all the books that I'm going to be reading for December as well as the books that I read in November. I hope that you guys had a great reading month for those and if you did, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, obviously give it a thumbs up, but if not, leave it in the comments. We'll chat about it. What books were you reading? Are you into Julia Clausen books? Are you reading Melanie Dickerson for the first time, which I know some of you guys are? And yeah, I guess, and I guess we'll talk to you guys later further into Christmas. I know I've been enjoying some of the vlogmas that Angela's been putting out, so you can check those out too, and we'll see you next time.